I'd like to say welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal, and I'm the president of MEM Investment Research. And in today's review, I'm going to be sharing with you a very simple element that is part of your chart, but it is a very powerful element as well. So I'm really going to be primarily focusing on this one characteristic, sharing with you the power of that characteristic, but also throwing in uh, quite a bit of other information as it comes up. I'm going to have a lot of slides, a lot of examples. So let's go ahead and get started, share with you that I do have quite a bit of experience both on and with Wall Street. I was a money manager of over $2 billion in assets, started my career actually at Goldman Sachs. But as it relates to my more relevant equity Education, it was while I was with William O'Neill and Company. And for those of you not familiar, Bill O'Neill is the founder of Investors Business Daily. Their sole purpose is to help investors uncover and then successfully trade these high performing, fast moving growth stocks. So during my period there, I was in their institutional equity marketing department. I traveled the globe working with top portfolio managers uh, around the world, teaching them this methodology, and then also helping them, uh, putting them in front of these fast moving uh, top performers. And that was for over 15 years. Uh, more recently, I've started my own firm, MEM Investment Research. As part of that, I do have a top performing bi-weekly newsletter that digs into where we are in the markets, what we are on the lookout for, also identifies stocks with uh, precise buy and sell recommendations. So that is one. And then I also have a lot in the way of courses. If you go to MEM Investment Research, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to be sharing with you a once in a lifetime uh, promotion. I have not done ever, but um, I think you'll be really interested to hear about it. It does have to do with courses and learning how to trade, particularly with my methodology, so that you can uh, get in front of these faster moving but higher outperformers. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and move forth. I will have, as I said, a lot of charts. Most of them are going to be very current, but it is only for educational purposes, not any particular or specific buy and sell recommendations. So let's take a look at what we are going to go ahead and cover today. The first is, I didn't tell you, I made it uh, rather secretive, but the characteristic that we're going to be reviewing today is volume, but we are also going to be marrying that volume with other characteristics, but it is going to be primarily focused on volume. I'm going to share with you why that volume is so important as a, a signal. And then five things that high volume in a stock can signal. Also, what technical indicators work best when you see these high volume characteristics. So in other words, you're screening, whether it's on a daily or a weekly basis, show me all stocks that are up on heavy volume. You're going to want to have these other indicators to tell you whether that high volume is something that you should pay attention to or not. Also, accumulation versus distribution. So, of course, accumulation of the stock is uh, in an uptrend. It's being accumulated versus a stock that is breaking down and under distribution. Uh, I think the first example I'm going to share with you is going to be really quite telling, but uh, how do you use the uh, characteristics that we're going to share with you? And then using history as a guide. I mentioned I'm going to have a lot in the way of uh, various slides, different examples that will really help bring home this concept of how important volume is. So let's go ahead and get started at the very beginning. Why is volume important? Well, I'll tell you when you are looking at a chart, a price chart of a stock or even the broader markets, when you see heavy volume coming into that, uh, I'll use stock right now, uh, really what it's telling you, particularly for these larger cap stocks, these better known Apple, Amazon, Facebook, so forth, it's telling you that institutions are taking a stand. So on average, historically, when you're looking at a daily price chart, the volume that you are viewing when you see these high volume characteristics, or really 
regular volume as well, about 80% of that volume is institutions coming in. And so these institutions, really, when you're looking at a price chart, it is a map to their activity, they are dominating the activity with their billions of dollars that they are putting to work. So when you see this high volume, uh, oftentimes it can be indicate a shift in sentiment for a stock, but more importantly, as it relates to those institutions, I mentioned that I did work and I still do with a number of well-known uh, larger firms. It takes uh, quite a bit of time for these firms to, uh, in one case, either accumulate or get a position in a stock, in some cases a week or two, if it's a smaller stock. And then likewise, if they want to exit a stock, it's going to take uh, more than that one day. So that volume is telling you that sentiment may have shifted, not just for one institution, it could be certainly uh, spread across. And it is something definitely worth paying attention to. Uh, when I say high volume, in essence, I'm talking about volume that is a, at least a 50. It's What you want to do is look at uh, a lot of charting pat, uh, software offers this already, where they will show you the volume characteristics below the price. And then there'll be a line through the volume indicating the average over the last 50 days. So I'm looking for volume that is above that 50 day average. We're going to look at stocks with even higher volume, uh, really to show the significance. Again, accumulation versus distribution. So let's look at those five things that volume in the price of a stock can indicate for you. And the one I talked about it, institutions are involved. You want to pay attention. These guys uh, have huge staff, analysts, feet on the ground. They're meeting with management, and they are oftentimes going to have insight that uh, you, as a self-directed investor, may not have access to. So uh, the other is volume can oftentimes indicate a stock that is beginning an uptrend. And we're going to, these examples are going to really make sense as we go through how you can de determine if that is in fact the case on that heavy volume or uh, quite the opposite, is the stock's uptrend reversing? Or is, it, is the stock beginning a downtrend? And then also it will provide confirmation of a move. And in this case, a lot of my work, I'm looking at charts, at stocks that are breaking out of bases. If this occurs on volume, it's really going to provide you with confirmation that that breakout uh, most likely on that heavier volume is going to uh, take have traction. Also, we can use volume characteristics to tell you what industry groups are coming in and out of favor. Uh, we're in an unusual period, certainly currently, but going back historically, I'm going to share with you over the last two, three months, some uh, different rotations that were signaled by these higher volume. And you do want to pay attention to the industry group that your stock is a part of. Uh, for those not familiar, uh, certainly you're familiar with the 11 sectors, but different services offer industry group uh, breakouts. And if you're in a strong industry group, one that's showing relative outperformance, the odds of your stock uh, that has other co uh, positive characteristic, uh, that strong group affiliation is really going to help it uh, propel the stock uh, higher. So uh, also how you can pinpoint entry and exit points with high volume stocks that gap up on volume. Uh, you're not going to want to chase it most likely. Oftentimes you will want to wait for that pullback, but stocks gapping up on volume certainly is a very vibrant signal. Uh, if a stock breaks below key support, on volume, you will want to exit. And I'm going to share with you what I mean by key support. And this is a fairly hard and fast rule, certainly for my uh, newsletter, for my clients, as well as for my own trading. Uh, also, if a stock, I talked about that, breaks out of a base, you might not be familiar with that terminology, but as we go through examples, it will make quite a bit of sense. And when it does occur on volume from my work, oftentimes uh, that can be a buy point. I do a lot of work as well with fundamental information. It's not just precisely technical. I need to see growth aspects. I need the stock to have strong earnings, strong sales, a strong growth outlook. That uh, would be for another day. 
but uh, certainly I do have courses on that, those fundamental characteristics. And when you can marry that with some of the characteristics technically that I'm sharing with you today, that is definitely going to drive you to outperform the markets. And then you do want to have a system to screen for these high volume events. Uh, hopefully we'll have time. I'll share with you a couple of uh, sites online that are at no charge and uh, you can quite easily screen quite simply show me those stocks that are up or down on heavy volume. So let's get started with some of these examples. This first chart and stock that I'm uh, sharing with you is Facebook. We're looking at a daily price chart and this lovely view is giving us uh, distribution characteristics as well as when the stock came back under accumulation. And so uh, again, a daily price chart, I'm gonna point out because it might look a little bit busy for those not familiar with my uh, formatting or layout, but let's take a look around this price. Uh, each bar here is one day, we're at a daily price chart. And then I have these simple moving averages. This green line is your 10 day simple moving average. The red is your 50 day simple moving average. Blue is your 200 day simple moving average. So these moving averages are gonna be really quite powerful uh, as far as aligning you with whether that stock is still uh, in an uptrend or not. So as we go through, you'll see the real relevance of these simple moving average. For me, it's a real centric focus. And then beyond that, I have other outlying technical indicators that can confirm potential action, but really it's going to be a lot to do with the simple moving average for me. So we're going back with Facebook on this daily price chart back to July, August period in 2018. Some of you may recall that Facebook, uh, the FTC began an investigation with their involvement with Cambridge. It had to do with data breaches really super big news. So what I'm sharing with you is this gap down upon the news. And on that gap down, the stock price broke below all of these simple moving averages. Now, for me, that I would be out immediately because take a look at the volume on that day. The volume was 700% above average. Absolutely. These are institutions they want out. And oftentimes when you see this type of parabolic volume, it's really only the beginning. And it could be on the upside. We're going to see stocks with these huge up volume days, and you'll see the significance there as well. But let's take a move uh, forward beyond just this price break, because I would argue that the current environment that we are in now, certainly last week, the broader market indices broke below each of these simple moving averages. We're going to look at the daily market at the end, but also a lot of stocks have also done this where they've broken key support. So from here, you are going to want to pay attention, and this is a very good example. For those of you that are already trading, you're in the markets, you've kept and held on to your stocks through last week's historic uh, drop. Uh, let's use this as an example of what you may want to uh, do going forward. So with Facebook, we had this big drop, and of course, there will be those that think that uh, it's a one-off, that Facebook will come back, that uh, it was just a FTC warning that had no real weight. So we can see going into the following week, the stock did have this rally attempt. A uh, couple of things here. I, from my work, this, this to me is far going to be the overriding aspect. I would not look to enter this stock as we go into that accumulation phase, you'll see the characteristics necessary to get back in. But we had this rally. Um, we can see the volume characteristics overall on these red down days. That's pure distribution. So now the stock is in a downtrend. And what you are seeing as the stock continues to descend is quite simply your down days, those red bars, are higher than the blue uh, the up days. That's a very simple metric. This is something that uh, I know Bill O'Neill paid very close attention to. So really, you don't have to be uh, keep to complicate things. It can be as simple as this. The stock's trading downward. You're getting more volume on the down days. That plain and simple is distribution. 
uh, institutions, investors want out. So the stock is continuing to decline. So we can look at other characteristics within these simple moving averages. So once we have this big price break, a rally attempt, and then a continuation of the decline, this 50-day simple moving average starts to trend downward. This uh, red 50-day for my work is kind of the line in the sand. Once it starts trending downward, what's gonna happen is your rally attempts are now gonna be met with resistance. This is a very heavy, tough downward trending, uh, well, downtrend that's gonna be really difficult to reverse. We eventually do, we'll get into that. But also this RSI, this is a momentum indicator up here, relative strength indicator. So we can see uh, it broke below this dashed line. That's your net neutral. So that's a negative. And then your moving average convergence divergence, that's what I have down here on the bottom, another momentum indicator, MACD. Black line breaks down below the red signal line, but more importantly, it breaks below the net neutral. So as we draw our eye up, we can see we have three negative occurrences simultaneously, a price break below all your key moving averages, a negative MACD, negative RSI, huge volume. So uh, head for the exits if you see that. We're going to have other examples that aren't quite as dramatic, but uh, just trying to make a point here. So let's go and progress further with Facebook and identify some of the characteristics on volume that occurred on vol volume that are telling you that it is uh, potentially time for you to revisit and get back into the stock. So it took uh, six months here we are over in February, and the price, uh, take a look at this gap up. And we did start to get this nice downward trending, uh, this nice uptrend reversal, which could have been played, but uh, this volume really was one of the more significant characteristics that gapped up on very heavy volume. But more simply, as your price starts breaking back above these simple moving averages, pay attention to the volume. We have an opposite occurrence here where your higher volume days are on up days. So we're breaking back above this 50-day simple moving average. That's my first signal that you can get back into the stock. As we uh, this is occurring, we can take our eye up and take a look at the um, RSI turning positive up here in line with the price break above the 50, and then your MACD turns positive. So that's our downtrend reversal on higher volume. So that is telling us that this downtrend has and is in the process of reversing. So here's another example. Another I'm going to be using a lot of daily price charts. So each bar is one day of trading activity. But really what I want to point out to you is what is and can often occur before these nice significant uptrends. This is Align Technologies, A-L-G-N. And what I'm pointing out to you here, this is uh, this chart's going back a little bit in time as well, May of 2018. Most of my other charts are very uh, current, but this was definitely worth uh, hanging on to and noting because take a look at this super high volume day at the end of April, much higher than your average going back uh, any good length of time here. And what I wanted to point out to you is that this volume bar correlates with this particular one day price action where the stock broke up above that critical 50 day simple moving average. I talked about that. Now, the stock did pull back for about a week after that, but certainly could have been kept on your watch list because this heavy, heavy volume. Oftentimes it's going to be on news and you'll want to take a look at that news. We're going to get into some news related volume uh, upticks and downticks going forward. But the other significant characteristic, once the stock enters this nice uptrend, it comes back up above that 50 day on very big volume entering into this uptrend. As the stock continues to progress higher, again, your higher volume days are these uh, darker colored bars, that's telling you that the accumulation is continuing. It's giving you that confidence that you're in a clear cut up trend. And then you can marry it with these other indicators. The RSI is positive. It's remaining above this net neutral. It can get up here into overbought, but that's fine. And then down below your MACD, 
FT, that other momentum indicator, black lines up through the red, that's your first signal, and now we're above neutral, so you're getting confirming action in both of your technical indicators, but for today's work, it's also being coupled with that volume, those higher volume days accumulation. Uh, talked about sector rotation, so we're going to get into that. This is a current chart of the technology sector in the S&P 500 XLK is the ticker symbol. Most of these charts I'm pulling from my old list. These are charts that uh, back here in October when we spotted this uh, rotation back into technology. Uh, this is the chart and then I'll show you how we then drill down from there to get to individual stocks. So uh, just of note here in the beginning of, of October, we had this gap up. This is a daily chart and we it did occur on very big volume. And then also it was simultaneous with an RSI that broke up above this net neutral into positive territory. And then that MACD, we had that black line up through the red as a positive signal, but it is now up here above the neutral. So we've determined that technology is uh, picking up, interest is picking up in the group, and it was a prior to this very significant uptrend uh, among or within that sector. So let's drill down a little bit more. Here we are looking at a sub-industry group, very uh, powerful one that is in technology, and that is semi conductor stocks, S-O-X-X, -X. this is an ETF for these semiconductor, they uh, manufacture or produce or provide semiconductor chips that help all kinds of, uh, every single area of manufacturing, your iPhone, uh, any part of technology is going to have the need for these semiconductor chips, so they're very uh, integral part within technology. So back here, back to that October period, Again, we talked about the sector breaking out and uh, doing so on heavy volume. We also saw that same activity among these semiconductor. This is just the group. From here, we're gonna drill down and take a look at a stock. I talked about the, uh, the need or the desire. Ideally, you are gonna wanna be participating in uh, stocks that are in these stronger groups that are outperforming. So again, the uh, break up here above this 10 day simple moving average, we're getting confirmation, higher volume on the up days. We can marry that with the MACD black line up through the red, very positive, uh, indicating that this negative momentum has now turned positive. And then also the RSI turning positive. So uh, I have a chart where I do show that, but if you drill it down, all of this is occurring simultaneously. So we can uh, uh, take a look now at semiconductor stocks because these volume characteristics are telling us that institutions are in, that it could very well be a very vibrant group. So here's a stock, one of the better names within NVIDIA, again, pulled from uh, when we sent this out last fall, NVDA, because uh, I talked about stocks breaking out of bases. And in this case, this is a saucer type base where the stock attempts to hit a new high, falls back, and then upon that breakout, above that prior, prior high, that is your base breakout. Take a look at the volume, huge volume on that base breakout. That's what I talked about before, as giving you confidence that the stock has entered into an uptrend. And NVIDIA had been a really, uh, actually it is still, I believe, on our list because, well, that's another conversation, but it has been a very big winner. We can see the RSI is confirming that uh, break base breakout, as well as the MAC D, so very, very big volume. I think what I'm pointing out here is Friday's action, last Friday, and uh, after the markets had a very tough week, the stock undercut this 50-day, but closed way up here on super heavy volume. So it was an up day. It was up about 4% on, uh, on Friday. So that was very, very bullish, very constructive another way that you can use that volume. Uh, I also want to share with you a longer term price chart. This is a monthly price chart. So each bar on this chart is one month of activity. And these longer term charts are often used 
by institutions. And the reasoning there is it really uh, just takes out a lot of the noise and uh, whippy action that you're going to get as you drill down to a weekly, daily, and even further. It smooths all of that out. These institutions, they are buying these stocks with an eye toward longer term. So uh, what you want to do on a monthly chart is have a six month simple moving average. So I'm taking us back to the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. This is Biogen, B-I-I-B, -I -I a big biotechnology stock. And so what we can see is another base breakout on the monthly. And this volume at this particular breakout point was double the average volume over uh, the average for the last year. So super heavy volume. And we can see that this base breakout on volume when coupled with a positive RSI and a positive MACD has uh, for this stock, as well as a lot of other biotechs back then, it really signaled a very significant multi-year lengthy uptrend. But again, that base breakout on volume was your first uh, signal that it could very well be going on to greater heights. Uh, here's going back to a daily price chart, CTAS, Cintas. These guys provide uh, linen and uh, for not only the hospitality industry, but for also hospitals. So it could maybe be interesting here at some point. But uh, what I did want to point out to you here is these high volume updates. This is a current price chart of CTAS, the daily price chart. And again, the stock picks up on news. Now right here, this was earnings. They came out with great earnings numbers. So the stock we can see is breaking out on very big volume. And after this significant three-day move, the stock forms another, this is called a flat base, where the stock really is in a back and fill, very tight uh, trading range. This can really be powerful when it springs and breaks out of this tight, uh, trading range back and fill for about two weeks. But again, this breakout of that base on huge volume. And, and from there, we do see a nice generally uptrending period before the current action in the markets uh, brought it to a halt. But uh, again, those volume characteristics uh, can really help in pointing you toward these stocks. Uh, Estee Lauder, this is another little bit of a dated chart back to 2018. It's a weekly price chart. So each bar is one week of activity. And Estee Lauder, another base breakout. This is about almost a one year base breakout. The stock uh, is languishing here at this new high, pulls back when it breaks out above that prior high. That is a base breakout. Take a look at the huge volume characteristics on that breakout. And then what I did want to point out to you is on this weekly chart, it went on for uh, at least a year, this nice significant uptrend. So each one, and as the uptrend is going, you're getting that confirming volume that the uptrend is very much in place. Another characteristic I wanted to point out to you with Estee Lauder, each one of these big high Bar. Uh, in other words, the stock advanced probably five to eight percent on each of these uh, bigger bars on the weekly. These are weeks that Estee Lauder reported their earnings. So that's going to be that fundamental side that I talked to you as being a primary driver. These bigger, faster moving companies are going to have strong growth profiles. So, uh, but again, in this case, these these volume bars are telling you the accumulation is still going on. Let's take a look about uh, at Amazon, oh, another weekly price chart. And what I wanted to point out to you here, this is a fairly recent chart, is how news can really be a driver. So with Amazon on this weekly, we can see it was kind of in a go nowhere period for about three plus months. We have this nice, big weekly uptick here. Take a look at that big volume. So if you are running screens for stocks that are up on volume, either daily or weekly, uh, I would urge you to take a minute and take a look. Why is the volume uh, so high? What What is driving interest in that stock, either to the upside or downside? In this case, the news was uh, Amazon had initiated ate at one of their first, uh, what is called prime day sales. And uh, it really was a tremendous boost 
uh, to their bottom line. So we can see this big volume breakout, putting this stock into a very lengthy, at least one year uptrend. So again, keying in on that characteristic. We can also uh, talk about industry groups again as a way to signal whether you should be in or out of that stock. Uh, what we're looking at here is called the Dow Jones, the restaurant and bar index. Uh, some of these are coming from stockcharts.com. Uh, if I didn't mention it yet, I do have two uh, weekly shows there. And within those shows, I highlight how you can use uh, stock charts to uh, uncover precisely what we're talking about here, as well as a lot of other interesting information. But back to the restaurant and bar index, this is a current chart, and I'm taking us back to last fall. Unlike when we saw technology come into favor, uh, right around that time, we saw these restaurant stocks breaking down. So this is that distribution again, using volume as your guide. So we can see as this stock begins to break down, let's draw our eye up here, this particular break below this 50-day red line, 50-day simple moving average. Take a look at that huge volume. That's, that's a big indication that there's been a character shift, uh, sentiment, investor sentiment shift from this bullish uptrending period. Now we've broken huge volume and we can see the significant downtrend that ensued and we are still not back to these prior peaks uh, back here from this break and then also uh, yeah this this uh, we did this is another look at last Friday tremendously big volume the fact that this stock broke even further below and then closed in the very upper reaches of its trading range for the day. Uh, just pointing out that that is uh, bullish action, not, not quite ready for prime time. But more importantly, this break on huge volume indicating sentiment shift. Take a look at some of the underlying stocks. This is McDonald's MCD and it really does mirror the industry group that we were taking a look at there where we had this big price breakdown. Take a look at these higher volume on your down days and you'll see just heavy, heavy distribution. We talked about once a stock breaks below the 50 and then that uptrend in the 50 day simple moving average kind of trends off. We can see how it acts as a ceiling as the stock continues to uh, go ahead and decline. Lots of heavy red down days indicating distribution. Here's Starbucks, another restaurant stock. Uh, here I am actually drawing that line that I talked about where simultaneous, the break of the Starbucks below the 50 day, huge volume, RSI turns negative simultaneously with that MACD, heavy distribution, high volume, more downside ahead. Um, so uh, another, again, uh, a lot of these stocks, I can go back to Starbucks, for instance, this was a big winner from the MEM Edge report from our newsletter. We were able to pick this stock up and uh, we had quite a nice advance, but from our work, as soon as it broke, we were out. Uh, Lululemon, another stock from our MEM Edge bi-weekly report. Uh, this had been a very nice, big winner for us until the markets got in the way. But one of the key uh, signals as far as indicating a potential uptrend back here in August, going into September, we had this building of a base, but we did have this big, nice base breakout here. So we can see that this breakout was on 540%. That, that volume was just absolutely tremendous. And this was on earnings. They came out with very strong earnings. So uh, the stock did have a two month period of malaise subsequent to that. But at the very least, this should put this on your radar uh, because this is the broader markets. This was a kind of tough period back here, September, October, but it did eventually enter into a very nice and healthy uptrend that can be supported by your other indicators. Uh, this is another huge volume day. The stock undercut the 10 day, that green line, simple moving average, but closed in the very upper portion of its trading range. So bullish action on very high volume. 
uh, Ring Central. This has been a big winner for us for actually a couple of years. Um, base breakout on volume. But let's take a look at Nike because we want to not just uh, focus on those base breakouts into uptrends. It's going to be critical on the downside as well, how these volume uh, bars can really signal to you that something has uh, potentially changed, that investor sentiment surrounding the stock has shifted. But Nike, another big winner for us here, in, got into this very nice uptrend alerted to that by their earnings release, big volume. The stock comes under accumulation and enters into this uptrend. Now, Nike, uh, we did remove it here from our MEM Edge suggested holdings list as it broke down below this 50-day simple moving average in conjunction with a negative RSI. And we already had had an earlier MACD negative signal. This is all about the initial release of the coronavirus news, uh, quite a bit of Nike's renewed sales back here came from China. So they were one of the first companies to show deterioration uh, in the face of the virus fears. So uh, this is your signal to exit. Another, this is a smaller company, A-L-L-E. We're looking at a daily price chart, but I really do, as you can tell, because it's a very powerful uh, signal, these base breakouts. So we have the daily price chart. This stock breaks out here 200% above average on this gap up on volume. So huge volume to the upside. Uh, the company was up eight, almost 9% on the release of strong earnings. So we can see that the stock had a very significant return. This is about a 22% return before faltering with the broader markets. But again, that big volume bar telling you uh, if you're not screening in other ways, quite simply up on volume would have uh, potentially gotten you in front of this stock. Alliance Bernstein, AB, another daily current daily price chart. And what I did want to uh, point out to you here is this, this stock had a couple of breakouts, a couple of these base breakouts on big volume. This is December, 340% above average on Alliance Bernstein, this big, nice gap up here. And this was a pre-announcement. It wasn't necessarily earnings, but huge volume. And the stock from there had that back and fill, very tight trading range as it digested this big move and then has another breakout into this uptrend on very high volume. Uh, we can talk here. Now, this is a defense stock, L3 Harris, and again, another daily price chart. But what I wanted to point out to you is this very nice uh, downtrend reversal. The stock had peaked back here in August of 2019, kind of languished before suffering. And then here is where it gets interesting from my work. The stock gaps up. The volume in this, uh, this gap up here is 60% above average. We can see the price has broken up above these key simple moving averages. You can marry it with an RSI now trending upward, as well as that MACD turning positive. And we can see the nice uptrend uh, before the broader market's deterioration. Uh, the stock had entered quite clearly into an uptrend, all beginning with these volume bars. Uh, using volume to determine when it's time to exit your stock. This is Weight Watchers, and we are going back to 2018 with this chart. It had been a very big winner going into the summer period of 2018, but let's take a look at your first signal that this uptrend had in fact reversed, and that would be your break below, in this case, your shorter term green 10-day simple moving average. This is your warning sign across the the bow, so to speak. Still finding support. Uh, you, you could have held on just thinking that perhaps it could hang in there. But once we break this 50-day and huge, huge volume, these institutions want out. Uh, for sure, this is an exit signal. And the stock did go on to deteriorate quite a bit further subsequent to these moves. But again, quite simply, your higher 
bar higher volume days are on this distribution sellers are in and the stock could easily trade quite a bit lower another one coming under distribution this is jbl this was another mem edge report nice big winning stock we were able to pick the stock up before this gap up in earnings it, we picked it up on this base breakout and we can see the nice uptrend however uh, JBL, Jable is a technology company. We did remove it from our list on this break. This is another coronavirus, primarily China related deterioration here. So the stock broke down here. It was hard for us to give this winner up, but we know that when it breaks below this 50 day simple moving average, take a look at your volume characteristics really ramping up here. The selling is coming in and then this break is really uh, time to exit. There are other indicators here that uh, can tell you, but I talk about how these moving averages now act as resistance on the downside. Uh, other indicators, this 10 day down through the 50 is a death cross, more downside ahead. So um, real life examples of when you can use those heavier increasing volume characteristics to tell you it's time to exit. And then again, heavier volume on your down days uh, continues, even though the stock already has been down quite a bit already. So I mentioned that I would take a minute here because I want to share with you where we are currently in the broader markets. And this is a daily price chart of the S&P 500. It's a current chart actually. Uh, it's taking us through the close yesterday. It is. Mm -hmm. And so um, yesterday we did have, of course, that nice rally. It would be a different picture if we saw today's deterioration. But more importantly, uh, let's take a look because the daily price chart, I have that 10-day simple moving average, your 50-day, and then your 200-day simple moving average. And uh, I have thousands of people that watch my weekly show on Friday afternoon. Uh, and I always begin by discussing where we are in the markets. It's a critical component. You want the markets to be in an uptrend, that healthy backdrop, if you're gonna be putting money to work. So of course, this is that October turn in the markets. We're finding support at this 10 day, simple moving average. Uh, trouble ahead, we were able to rebound nicely from that first coronavirus pullback. But let's look at this deterioration from last week. And what I wanted to point out to you is these huge, heavy volume. You'd have to go back really very far in time to see similar characteristics. And the reason I'm pointing that out is uh, from our work, those that get our MEM edge report, uh, we removed most of our stocks on this break. Uh, some stocks held in well. We have defensive stocks that held in well. Uh, so they were able to sidestep uh, this further deterioration. But more importantly for today is these huge volume characteristics. This is really historically unprecedented to have this huge drop in one week and to go into a corrective phase. That's when the markets are down more than 10%. Last uh, in six trading days is just unprecedented, but certainly the volume. So from my work, this volume is telling us that we, uh, we're in a different period. The, the, certainly the mentality has shifted. A lot of the selling last week, one would argue, was panic driven. But certainly uh, we, we're in a period that uh, kind of a new order is, is in town. So uh, we're going to have to continue to pay attention to the volume, uh, particularly on these up days. Last Friday was very encouraging. We had big volume. The markets closed in the upper portion of their trading range for the week. So that was actually uh, rather bullish in, in there. And uh, the subsequent trading on Monday of this week. Uh, but yeah, I, I did I talk about this? I that My MEM Edge report, I do have a uh, four week super special going on. So you can get it for $7. And even if you just for the next four weeks, I'm providing uh, daily alerts for the markets, as well as individual stocks, you're, you're going to want to, if you're in the markets already, you're going to want to uh, have a 
good insight on how to handle your stocks, but also the report will immediately alert you to when this uh, downtrend is over and when it's safe uh, to get back in and capitalize on uh, the potential new uptrend. So conclusions that we can draw from today, and then I'm actually going to share with you those ways that you can screen. So uh, don't go anywhere yet. I'm going to leave the PowerPoint and share with you some ways that you can screen for these volume, high volume days. Uh, but today we can see, hopefully you can uh, take note of really how important volume can be to helping you time your trading and helping alert you to sentiment shifts in various stocks those that you own as well as the broader markets. And then you do wanna have a system in place. I'm gonna again share with you some ways to do that so that you can uncover when the volume has picked up. Uh, and then here I'm saying, if you are not inclined to do that, uh, take advantage of my newsletter. You can go to meminvestmentresearch.com and uh, take a look at uh, four weeks of my newsletter. Uh, special offer today. So a lot of the stocks I shared with you today are what are called momentum stocks. These are stocks that trade faster, oftentimes higher than the broader markets. So in this course, uh, I help you uncover ways that you can get in front of these momentum stocks and then uh, how you can effectively trade them. So I don't think that yeah, I didn't provide this. So this is this link is not going to be there. Uh, you can go to meminvestmentresearch.com and the course is offered on that website for that special pricing. And um, also wanted to remind you of my shows on stockcharts.com. Wealthwise Women on Thursday afternoon, Aaron Swenlin, another stockcharts.com commentator, and myself. Uh, we do lots of different uh, cover lots of different areas of the markets, psychological impact and technicals and so forth. And then my MEM Edge show every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hopefully be able to share. Yes. Okay. But before we leave that, I talked to you about a unprecedented special that you can take advantage. For those of you that are interested in learning uh, how master the art of uncovering these big winning stocks and also uh, how to successfully trade them. I do have a five part course. You can get immediate access to the course and on my website, this is from my web website, learn how to trade. It's going to talk about uh, up here are uh, a few of my many uh, Testimonials. People are just thrilled. What I've been able to do is just uh, simplify the markets, just really help you hone in on those components that are important to get you in front of this. Um, who is a good fit for this course? It's going to be uh, if you are someone who believes that stocks can go up much higher and faster than others, uh, that this would be the course for you. You're looking for an easy to implement system that'll get you in front of these stocks and also help you keep your losses to a minimum. So I talk about what you're going to learn in the course, how to get in these winning stocks early, uh, historical precedents there, how to uncover these patterns. And then also there are five bonus courses that come with this course. Now, this course also, if you go on my website, I talk about each module in very uh, much in detail. So you can see what precisely you will be getting in addition to those five bonus courses. So normally the course is $9.97. And uh, for the first time ever, I am offering a special where you can get half off and you'll get uh, access to these courses right away. What you'll want to do when you hit the add to cart is use the promo code half off and you want to do capital H A L F and then capital O and then small F F. So half off, get immediate access. This is a powerful course again, so that when the markets turn, you will be able to capitalize on that downtrend reversal and get in front of these big winning stocks. So I think I still have, yeah, I have plenty of time. So let's go ahead over and I'm going to share with you a couple of websites 
where you can, but before we leave, I want to urge you to take advantage. This is a very, very highly unusual one-time offer for this course. So uh, if you've been thinking that you want to learn how to trade and you want to get in front of these uh, bigger movers, a lot of the stocks, the precedent for this, uh, this is a proven system that is built upon Bill O'Neill's work. Um, this system also, it has, uh, the, the precedence is a lot of the stocks have been up uh, hundreds of percent, thousands of percent. So these are, are really big winners, but you can apply the principles to slower moving stocks as well. So let's go over to uh, what's called FinViz. I'm not affiliated in any way with them, but let's just go ahead to this first page. What I wanted to do is show you how you can go ahead and screen. But even before that, on this particular page, and I'm fairly certain that many of you have services that are also providing you with uh, similar intel. What it's going to do is here, these are all stocks that today, it's usually going to be bigger names, that had some sort of major news announcements. And you'll see that they are either up or down on big volume. So that could be really a very simple way for you to get in front of stocks where sentiment has shifted. They're either up or down. But again, bearing in mind, we are in a highly unusual period in the market. So the information I'm sharing with you today Today, uh, could perhaps be put aside and utilized when we are in a more normalized market. But let's just head over to this screener. Again, the items I'm screening for here, you can easily do with any given service that you might already be using. So quite simply, given the uh, dynamics today, this is something you can do if you were inclined on a, a given day. We start out with about 7,700 uh, listed stocks. This is not just the US, it's global. And then from here, quite simply, I'm asking that the stock be up. Now, again, in a more normalized market, you might wanna say up 5%, but that would be a tall order, uh, certainly given the markets were down tremendously today. So I'm just gonna say any, I'm sorry, I wanna say today up, the stock was up today. And so now we've narrowed it down to 200 uh, to 2200 stocks that were up today. But then from here, I talked uh, throughout this period about volume characteristics. So for, for this screening here, we can go over to descriptive and then it has average volume and we can do that. But most people aren't going to know what the average volume of any given stock. So more relevant here is what's called relative volume. So as we go down here, I want to see the volume at least one time. So uh, that's a lot to ask, but a stock, again, very, very simple. It's up on volume. So let's see if that helps us narrow the list down. No, not uh, as much as I thought. So we can even get more strict with our volume. So 530 stocks, with heavy volume that are up today. Now for me, I want to see, because there is another way that you can do this. You can go over to market cap, show me all stocks that are um, over 300 million. Weed out those tiny guys. And uh, because they are gonna be even more volatile in a volatile market. And then sort it by market cap. Let me see what big names were up today on heavy volume. And so what we can do over here is come over, we'll see a couple of REIT stocks. These are defensive names. And we can see uh, Coca-Cola up, uh, not a lot. It was only up a quarter of a percent, but apparently it was on huge volume. But this generally would be uh, viewed as a defensive stock. But take a look, we can see gold stocks up here. From my work, I'm gonna be more interested in those stocks that are uh, defensive. So that would be Coke, your REITs, uh, utility. Here's a nice power stock. And uh, from here, you can then uh, take a look at their chart. A lot of them are gonna look rather damaged. So they might not be as interested. Let me see what we are for time. I do have a bit more time here. So uh, from here, I did wanna share with you another way that you can screen for these up on volume. And this is stockcharts.com that I'm taking you us into. 
and uh, on the initial interface page here, not going to be quite as useful today because of the market dynamics, but what you can do is put up any of the various indices and it's right here. So when you see this up here in the forefront, it's also uh, stock charts among many other people uh, are really telling you that this, these high volume characteristics, how important they are and can be for getting you in front of stocks. So the most active is how you're going to want to screen it. And unfortunately, today, your most active stocks are on the downside. We're not seeing any green, but you can then uh, kind of a t get a feel because Bank of America, I want to see, let's, let's go ahead over to the Dow get the most active. So these are the most active, again, uh, primarily on the downside, except KO. We did see that Coke was up on a lot of volume, but quite simply, we can see that uh, JP Morgan, uh, we can see some themes beginning to emerge with these bank stocks uh, getting hit quite hard. So this is another way that you can very easily screen for these movers. NASDAQ down here, most active. And uh, we did get one stock up here uh, today. It was up quite a bit. And it is a biotech stock, but big volume. And for those of you that are more active traders, you're, you're not afraid of a single digit stock. This is a $7 stock. But this huge volume, took, look at the volume relative to historical precedent. I would just take a minute and take a look. Have they uncovered a vaccine? Are they on their way with a uh, coronavirus cure? Uh, but certainly worth noting that uh, this stock is up quite a bit. And I think I'm out of time. I don't imagine that there's uh, much in the way of any questions. But for those of you that do, you can go to meminvestmentresearch.com, contact us, and I'd be happy to answer any questions on anything that we've been covering here today. And uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I want to, yeah, say thank you guys. Uh, you're the last presentation of the day. So if you want to take a couple extra minutes, that's, that's mm -hmm. not a problem. Uh, someone asked, would this work with futures? I, uh, well, I have to say I don't, th yes, it is, because the same characteristics would apply. I am not an active trader in futures, but let's go ahead over, uh, just because we're here, and uh, certainly the SPY, SPY, uh, I do have clients that do trade futures, and they use these same characteristics uh, to identify shifts in these uh, different areas of the market. Hope that's helpful. Um, uh, someone asked, could you just trade the gaps uh, versus the volume? I'm not uh, familiar with that uh, because you mean don't pay attention to the volume. You can play gaps up uh, when the volume isn't there, most definitely gaps up or down. But the relevance of what I was sharing today is when you get the volume, it's gonna give you more confidence that that gap up is gonna trade higher. And likewise, that the, potentially that gap down could lead to more downside, but very much so. You can always uh, trade those gaps. Uh, I do a lot of work around earnings. When these gaps up occur, many times it's just the beginning of an uptrend but for the most part the higher the volume the the more uh the likelihood you're you're really in essence just tipping the scales in your favor to uh continue whatever that particular action is telling you okay and just uh one more question uh so we broke the 200 what's the next stop Okay, that is actually um, a very good question. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, given today's market. And really, you're probably not going to like my, my answer. Uh, I'm going to blow this up because we're going to go to a, a weekly chart. And really what you want to look for when you're looking for support, you're going to go back to these prior lows as your next potential area of support. So we still haven't uh, 
undercut this low here. So that, for all intents and purposes, is realistically, when you are looking for support, you immediately go to those prior lows. And once they are broken, uh, you go down to your other low. But given the action that we've seen in the markets here, uh, this is what we were talking about before, these huge high volume characteristics. Uh, I talked about this in my newsletter last over the weekend, that in essence, this is, uh, it could be called a crash. The market has crashed, uh, just the severity, the quickness of this decline. And uh, to the point that when this occurs, oftentimes those seeking areas of support, it, they kind of uh, actually go out the window. And really on this daily chart, you can see that we did undercut this. I, I, I must say, I, um, was once we started to see these just breaks, 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 big volume, uh, the concept that there would be any kind of logical area of support kind of uh, goes to the wayside a bit. We're, we're, we're just not in that, uh, the, the markets are just so very unstable that uh, the, these kind of normalized support areas just get washed away quite quickly. But, uh, but again, for, for normal purposes, you are going to want to go back to these prior lows and utilize that as uh, potential areas of support. But um, from my work, we're, we're, we're just uh, kind of in a bit of a limbo, kind of a nowhere's man land where the volatility continues to be quite high. Emotions are running high. All of this is fear driven. Uh, panic and and so you're you're essentially more standard ways uh, they do tend to go to the wayside during these periods in my uh, experience okay yeah I think that's that's it for the questions so okay uh, super so thank you Alrighty. oh thank you for having me on and uh, have a great, great rest of the uh, week great presentation to end, super. The, end of the day Wonderful. Okay. Take care, guys.